What's going on everybody? CFC DP here with you. We're for the first match review of the year. Chelsea get the three points in the first victory of the season against Everton on the road at Goodison Park where they haven't won in the past five years. So despite the performance, which we'll break down for you shortly here, it was a win. Three points is three points. So let's start by talking about the tactical kind of developments that Tuchel broke in to the squad against Everton. So it was an interesting start for Chelsea as they kind of had to uh, ease into the game. In the first 10 minutes, Everton's crowd really took it over. And it took a while for Chelsea to really get kind of in the driver's seat in terms of possession and tempo of the game. Um, Everton, without a striker, really tried to deploy some, uh, some movement on the wings. Playing through Anthony Gordon um, as well as Damari Gray, it was interesting to see how Chelsea's back three of Aspilicueta, Silva, and Kyle Du Koulibaly kind of all meshed together in their first actual real game performance. Um, they did start against Udinese in preseason, but Premier League's a different story. So I was kind of concerned to see how quickly those three very seasoned professionals, mind you, would kind of mix together and I shouldn't have been concerned. It, it was very seamless. Um, those three back there were stepping in for each other at the right time. It appeared that they didn't really need to have a lot of communication with each other. And I'm sure, you know, watching from TV, they were communicating, but they were almost stepping in the right places at the right time. And you can go to the experience of that. So you see why Tuchel was so fond of bringing Koulibaly into that left center back position because he has played so many games, so many important games, and it was a seamless transition from him um, after Rudiger left. So defensively, I was really impressed with how they were able to rotate, especially when Everton were getting some breaks along the wing. There was a few separate occasions where Aspilicueta slid over um, to help. There was one play in particular that they noted on TV, but I saw as well, where Thiago Silva was trying to play maybe an off offside trap. Koulibaly recognized that it might not work, went ahead and cleared a dangerous ball into the box. Thiago Silva, again, in transition. Um, you have a young player in Damari Gray running um, on the left-hand side, and Anthony Gordon's on the right-hand side. Silva's kind of an on, on an island, and... Damari Gray decided to pass it and it worked out because Thiago Silva set him up for that pass right away and was able to get a deflection on it. So defensively, it was really good to see. In the midfield, we didn't necessarily see the fluidity and connection um, from the back to the front from Conte and Jorginho that, what, that we really liked to see. Um, you know... I think Jorginho in his day is a very important player, very important at setting up long runs into the box, um, kind of that regista. But in the build-up play process, he can get into trouble quite a few times by just kind of holding the ball and hoping that he's going to get fouled. There was a few times today where I noticed Jorginho would be standing there waiting to absorb the contact, but he would just lose the ball and it would start on an Everton break. I think when Tuchel is preaching about quick, decisive movements, that's not what he's kind of preaching about. But Jorginho, an athlete in his own right, isn't the most athletically gifted of all of our midfielders. So if he has to make a quick turn in the area, it's not necessarily as easy for him to do that. So we do see him getting caught in possession quite a few times. And then Chelsea get kind of burnt on the back end. Now, it didn't lead to any goals today. However... Um, it's something that against a better team, it could become a problem for Chelsea. I thought N'Golo Conte had a pretty decent game. Um, he was flying all over the pitch, had a couple of key interceptions, um, was a little slow in his decision-making too, but with Sterling up front being changed in and kind of positions changing in terms of the front three, um, I think that's something that will happen. Everton was doing a really good job of narrowing the pitch. So Chelsea were kind of saying, all right, well, we want to attack centrally, um, but we kind of have to play on the outsides to see if we can get something to happen. So it wasn't necessarily um, the easiest thing for Chelsea to do in Conte um, to make those quick decisions where you have to be a little bit more precise. Um, but overall, um, in terms of ball retention and whatnot, 
he had a pretty good game. Um, attacking wise, we saw uh, Sterling, Havertz, and Mount play. Um, I'll just kind of go through each of their game summaries. Um, Mount didn't really have a good game. He really didn't impact it. He had one pretty decent attempt from the left-hand side that went wide. Um, he, he pressed relatively good, but he wasn't really being like the creative playmaker that we have come accustomed to. So he didn't really show up this game. And I think Tuchel was kind of getting on him on the sidelines. Um, and you saw him get a quick hook and Christian Pulisic came into the game um, for Chelsea. So Mason Mount kind of had an incomplete and a not very good performance today. Kai Havertz was pretty similar. Um, he had didn't have many chances. Um, there was one opportunity where he had turned over um, a Liverpool defender or a, a, an Everton defender um, had potentially a chance to shoot as Jordan Pickford was outside of his goal. Never did. Um, unfortunately, Ben Godfrey got injured on the play, so I hope hope he's all right. Um, but nevertheless, Kai Havertz needs to do more to kind of work in that role because Sterling, who had the best game of the front three and offered real attacking presence in terms of off the dribble, creating space and whatnot, it was interesting to see how their interchange really needs to rely on Kai being more of an aggressive attacking option. So I think it's going to be important for him if he's going to want to hold down that spot um, to really be that attacking aggressive option and finding more spaces in front of Nat because we often just saw Sterling in front of Nat and while a great finisher, he was slightly offside on one rebound Kai Havertz needs to be up there getting some poachers attempts as well. So it was interesting to see how those guys worked up top once Pulisic came into the game. Pulisic actually offered uh, a little bit more on the ball. Um, didn't really impact the game much as well because Everton was kind of really shutting Chelsea down in terms of their narrow build-up play. I mean, you know, honestly, they had some good runs in the box, like Chilwell's run where he got uh, caused the penalty to happen. Um, was a good run, but other than that offensively, there really wasn't too much going on um, and definitely Chelsea escaped with that 1-0 win in my opinion. Um, in terms of the substitutes today, um, it was an interesting kind of, Reese James was playing like five different positions, but Pulisic came in, didn't really do too much. Ruben Loftus-Cheek is apparently the first option at right wing back um, off the bench for Tuchel. He, he came in and he, he looked okay, nothing spectacular, but he was okay. Um, Cucurella came in. Cucurella looked pretty good. He looked really, uh, his passing was nice. He had a really, really good opportunity for Sterling. Um, Cucurella put one into the box, and Sterling, the, it was a nice block um, by an Everton player, but it was kind of the right things we were, wanted to see. And then Armando Broja came in for Kai Havertz, and it appears that Broja is going to get the first group of games here to see if he can be a backup or even a potentially starting center forward for Chelsea. Um, he did some really nice things in terms of movement and pressing. Um, didn't get too many opportunities on the ball um, because Chelsea were trying to kind of wind down the clock from the second the second half started. Um, but Broja definitely showed a lot of energy and, and effort and I'm sure that in a little bit more of an open game where Chelsea's trying to add on to their lead. He's somebody that will get definitely chances to score. And then Conor Gallagher made an appearance um, at the very end of the game and didn't really have any opportunity. So um, that's kind of how every position, substitute, and position group um, broke down for Chelsea. Um, looking at sort of the big themes of the game itself, Chelsea need to determine their identity. And I think obviously their identity is we need to make sure we're sure defensively. If we don't give up any goals, we'll never lose a game. However, I think Chelsea need to be a little bit more aggressive and meaningful in their offensive attacks. Um, there was a lot of times where we didn't really seem to know what to do. There wasn't as many balls in from the outside as we've once expected of Chelsea. I mean, if you just look last year at uh, Reese James and Ben Chilwell's input into the offense, I mean, it, it's kind of interesting because I said this to my brother I was watching the game with, that Chelsea are sort of 
playing an offensive style that would almost tend to believe that Giroux is still on the team. I mean, you know, they're putting stuff in the box and whatnot, and at the same time, there's nobody there for them. When Chelsea try to break into the middle channels, and now they're dribbling in off of the edge of the box, perhaps, that's where we saw some of the better opportunities. Not necessarily aerial passes in that didn't work, especially against a team like Everton with a lot of big center backs. That's not going to necessarily work. I mean, it may work against another team, but that's not the style today. Chelsea are going to have to learn how to play on those inside channels. And I think when Chelsea looked great today was when Raheem Sterling was playing those inside channels. When Raheem Sterling was pushing the ball in and making reactionary passes. Now, he has to realize that this isn't Manchester City and those players aren't going to necessarily be right on uh, you know, the same wavelength as him. So it's going to take some time for those auxiliary players to sort of figure out where Sterling likes to be the ball because you could tell the offense is running through him. So how that will change Chelsea's outlook on the next four weeks, I think it's going to be definitely trial and error, but it is going to be an integral part of this team to realize our offensive identity, which we've yet to find. Um, I think kind of the next big topic is the transfer market. So with the transfer market, uh, the window's kind of shaking down. Koulibaly goes down with cramps. Silva goes down with cramps. We have to have more depth, and it clearly is showing you that Trevor Chalaba is not rated to be a player in this squad because Tuchel had moved James kind of in a couple different options where you might see a guy like Trevor Chalaba come into the game, especially against an Everton, and and he wasn't ready to do that. Cucurella, who played half a training session, was able to come in um, at left wing back. Reese was able to move to right center back. Ruben to right wing back. Aspie to left center back. So, you know, if you get a Wesley Fafana in, that is something that extremely gives you a depth option for the rest of the season in the next 10 years, and as well as a guy that you can sort of hand the mantle over um, from Aspie because with the three experienced center backs, it's going to be tough for them to stay fit the whole year. So definitely trying to get Fafana in and see what he can offer you and then move Aspie back to a utility defender, I think is for Chelsea's best interest. Um, they got the clean sheet today, but Everton didn't have a striker. So you can't really weigh it out like that. So, you know, we're less than a week away from Tottenham, who just put up four against uh, a Southampton squad that isn't that great defensively. But it's going to be coming next week. There's going to be a lot of pressure on Chelsea to show up. So they're going to have to kind of operate in a tight setting, and hopefully that Silva and Koulibaly are able to kind of recover from their injuries in a timely fashion so they could play. Because if we have to throw Chalaba in there, um, you know, it, it might be a troublesome night for us. But we got the win. We got the three points. That's what really matters. I'd like to thank you for tuning in to my match uh, review against Everton today. Chelsea got the win, of course. We're going to be coming out with a few more transfer pieces, I'm sure, during the week uh, as Frankie de Young rumors, uh, Wesley Fafana rumors, and a potential forward option kind of heat up a little bit as we inch closer to that September 1st transfer window deadline. So we'll do that. We'll obviously preview the Tottenham game um, a little bit later in the week. I'm going to go enjoy my weekend now. I hope you have a blessed rest of your weekend and a good start to your next week, and we will talk to you very soon.